My name is Kurt Blanock, and this is my wife, Janice, and this is Luke's story. From the time he was just a young boy, he was, um, he just was thrilled about sports. He just loved baseball and basketball. Yeah, you know, elementary school and into high school, um, where he was a healthy 16-year-old boy. It all started in basketball season. Um, it was, he came home from practice, he had an ice pack on his back, and I said, what's going on with that? And he said, oh, just back's a little sore. I said, okay. So the next day, again, went to basketball practice, and that evening, um, it happened again. And we said, well, let's, let's take him in the emergency room. So we went to Cannonsburg Emergency Room, and, and they said, well, he needs to have an MRI. It seemed to drag on and on. And by then it was five or six in the morning. About 10 doctors and, and nurses came into our room and they said, we never in a million years expected to see this, but there is a mass on your son's spine. And they said he needs to have surgery immediately. And during that time, there was nothing they could do to stop the pain. So we actually put him in a wheelchair and we took him down the hall and there was a great big massive bathtub and we filled it with warm water and we just thought, you know, maybe maybe that'll help. But we, we literally would have done anything to take that pain, but there was nothing. And that's when they told him that he had cancer. And when he said that, when the, the surgeon said that, we all just broke down and cried. 24 hours before that, he was a normal kid going to basketball practice. And then here I am, you know, Googling survival rates for, for Ewing sarcoma. You, you almost kept thinking that you're gonna wake up and this is all gonna be just, you know, a dream, a bad dream. One thing he was concerned about was sports. So he asked the oncologist, am I still gonna be able to play sports? And they said, there's a chance you may never play competitive sports again. The way that Luke reacted was, okay, we'll, we'll see about that. If Luke made up his mind that he wanted to do something, there was no stopping him. So even while he was still hooked up to the post-chemo hydration, he'd be on the exercise bike pedaling miles and miles and miles. He'd drive um, into Children's Hospital, um, he'd get the radiation, and then he'd drive to Cannon Mac, go to school in the afternoon, and then he'd have basketball practice in the evening. And the very first game back was was a big deal. And the, the, the media was there and his teammates were all around him. After the game, uh, a reporter asked him, you know, how did it feel? How did it feel to get back on the court? And he said, it felt like I didn't have cancer. So we learned right before baseball season that the cancer was back in his femur. So when he thought he could help the team win, he dressed up. And there was one game in particular against Mount Lebanon. And he came over to me and he took off his hat and he said, look, and he went like that. And he was pulling out chunks of his hair during the game. You know, he didn't like his hair coming out. So as soon as we got home, um, him and his girlfriend, Natalie, shaved his hair off. And his next scan after that, were just the, our absolutely worst nightmare. It showed that the cancer spread to multiple parts of his spine, multiple parts of his pelvis, his arm, his leg, his lungs. And that was the point where they told him that he probably only had a couple of weeks to live. At that point, the, this, the community came together. Complete strangers just went out of their way to do things to help us get through what we were what we were going through. A little bit after that, um, he decided that that he was going to ask his girlfriend Natalie um, to marry him. He goes, "I'm 18 years old, so I normally wouldn't be getting married. So if I marry her, then doesn't that mean that I'm giving up?" And then I said, "When you're with someone together, you're stronger." Jan and I coming together made us stronger. I said, that's how you and Natalie have to be. The community again all came together and we planned a wedding. So February 19th, 2016, Luke and Natalie got married. When they introduced 
the new bride and groom, they walked out onto the aisle, straight to the dance floor. No walker, no crutches, no cane, and they danced. So after the wedding, Luke and Natalie wanted the family to be together. So we all went to Anna Maria Island, uh, the spring training home of the Pittsburgh Pirates. In a press conference, Clint Hurdle was asked about Luke being there, and he said, I don't know, we'll have to give him a mulligan on that one. I don't know if I'd bring my family to the honeymoon. And Luke, upon hearing this, said, Clint, it's not a honeymoon. He threw me under the bus. It's a vacation. <laughs> Clint threw me under the bus. As parents, you know, we're the ones who are supposed to calm him down. We're the ones who's supposed to comfort him. But time and time again, it was him that comforted us and all the way up to um, the day he died, August 7th, 2016. But throughout the whole thing, um, it, was, it was always the, the community bringing meals to us, singing Christmas carols, 25 people showing up at our house to do all of the summer jobs that I weren't, wasn't able to do. And I think with the sarcoma walk, you kind of feel that same thing. We're all there together as a community with the common goal. As Luke passed away, he, he was writing in a journal to uh, Natalie and to Kurt and I. Um, and one of the things, the very special things that we hold very dear in our heart is a quote that he left um, in his handwriting, which Natalie now has tattooed across her arm, um, that says, what you have once loved, you never lose. And so even though we don't have Luke in our lives, we will always have him in our hearts as well as all the people who were fortunate enough to meet him in his lifetime.